Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I'm joined once again by Brian from Anarchy Models. Hello, everyone. And uh, we're going to be looking at some camouflage stencils. Uh, now, you've previously done camouflage before, but using the, um, the sticky, the high definition stencil yeah. version. So what's the difference here? So for, for a good while, people have been saying, can you make the, the camouflages in the HS material, the, the reusable material? Mm -hmm. Um, but I was always reluctant because it was going to be tricky to wrap a complicated model in a flat sheet. Mm. Um, so I've been thinking about it for a while, trying to figure out ways of doing it. And so whilst you're not going to, be able to get quite the same effect, I have got some stuff here that can get a similar effect to the camouflages we've done already. Mm. Um, so if we cut to the other camera. So this has uh, been done with one of the sticky stencils that we do. Mm -hmm. um, as we can see, the, the pattern just covers the entire model. Um, and that's because it's done with a sticky stencil that's just loose shapes, so you can really wrap the whole model. Um, if you had a flat sheet, um, it wouldn't work as well. So we've come up with a couple of different ideas. Um, whilst this is a flat sheet, um, this one's only really intended for use on flat, kind of flat models. So stuff such as these. Um, so it's very smooth with recessed detail. Um, we're gonna cover how to use that later. Um, and then for more complicated vehicles, uh, we have these other stencils here um, where you're going to be using the edge to create a shape on the tank. And mm -hmm. So well, it's going to create a similar effect to the other stencils, but not quite as detailed yeah. as the high definition. So it's not quite a, a one and done lay down you use very no, stencils No, you're not going to just lay down the stencil and yeah. spray it once and it's done. You, you're going to have to work around the detail that's yeah. on the vehicle um, and it, let, let that dictate where you put it. So if you've got little spikes or things coming off the vehicle, you work the stencil around that and sort of think ahead where okay. your shapes are going to go and where it's going to fit easiest for you. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll cover that a bit later. Okay. Uh, so where are we going to start then? Um, well, we'll start off um, with uh, one of the new other camos. Um, so let's start with this one. So this is, uh, we're still deciding exactly what you get in the kit size wise. Um, but so this is showing uh, what I'm going to call uh, wobble camo. Mm -hmm. So you basically got this wavy line around the edge of the shapes here. Yep. And we're going to use that to create um, shapes on the vehicles um, in, in a camo sort of style. Um, it's probably easier to to sh show it in the video and try and explain the use. Um, but this is the sort of thing you'll get in the set. Again, we're still deciding on what sizes go in each set. Mm -hmm. um, this is the prototype stuff. Um, but uh, it'll give you an idea of what we're going to do. Okay. Sounds exciting. Uh, so let's kick into it. Yeah. So we're going to be using uh, this tank today. Um, this is a from a designer I like. This is from uh, Nate Famer or N Famer. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a flame tank. It comes with this cool little trailer, flame trailer. Um, so we're going to work on one of those today. Um, and um, I'd, when you're building your models, don't glue your turrets on, so it's a bit easier to um, paint them. And I believe that magnetize the guns and stuff, so you can change them. Um, it's going to be easier to paint uh, sub assemblies than than a whole thing. So. What we're going to try and create is wavy lines going down the, sort of the side and over the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just pick a suitable size stencil. And we're going to try and go round. We've got this uh, raised area on the side there. We're going to try and go round that to save us having to worry about it. So we're going to start by putting the shapes either side of that. Um, and you, it, the, the sensors will come curved so you can pick up different areas. And what I'm going to do is spray on the inside of the stencil here so that we don't have to put a stencil over the center of this raised area. And you're going to hold it as tight as you can to the model. And we're just going to spray the side section and then move on to the top. I'm going to work along the edge of the stencil to start with, building the color up. and letting it fade out into the center of the panel here. And so I'm just using the air to dry it now. If you let it get too wet, it's gonna to go under the stencil. 
Uh, it doesn't matter too much if it does with the camos because when you've done weathering and stuff, it's just going to hide the any uh, oversprays. So there we've got the first pass. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, I'm going to go round this lump on the side to save me having to worry about that. So I'll bring the sensor right up to that and then do the next stage. Because I know I'm going to go over the top of this, I'm going to do underneath this mud guard area as well. I'm trying not to fill in this center area entirely. I want to get a little bit of overspray just so it's a, a lighter brown. Uh, so it's darker than the, the base, but then lighter than the edge. Sure. Um, so there's the first stage. So it looks like we've used three colors there because this lighter section, this middle section is a bit darker. We've actually only used um, one color to get that. Um, so I'm just going to touch in some of this area, make it a little bit darker. We don't have to worry about stenciling that. Again, I'm mainly concentrating on the edge of the stencil. So there's probably almost more paint going on the stencil than there is on the model at this point. So I want the edge really dark to give the definition to the pattern. And then the nice overspray in the middle just tints that middle section. And again, I'm just working around that detail to save me having to worry about it. And whilst you're spraying, you want to make sure you keep the stencil still. If you move the stencil while you're spraying, um, it will mess it up. And if you do move it, you have to try and line the stencil up again, which you, you can do, um, but it can be a bit tricky to line it up perfectly. Especially with some of the more regular patterns. Yeah, it can be, especially when the stencil's got lots of paint on, um, it's difficult to remember which bit you used. Yeah. Um, but you can, you can do it. Um, do you find uh, coming in with the airbrush rather than directly vertically, but have it at a slight angle so it's hitting the stencil first and then onto the tank? So difficult to explain. If, um, if you're coming at a slight angle, you have a chance of maybe making the, the stencil left or... Yeah, you want to try and come in at 90 degrees to the, to the stencil. Mm as much as you can. Sometimes you can't do that. Um, but you, you, if you're holding it right close to the edge of the, the pattern, so if I'm holding this mm. here, I'll be holding it right up to the end. So I'll be busy painting my fingers as much as I am the tank. But that helps stop it lift. Um, but I would be, you know, ideally at 90 degrees. Okay. If you have it angled this way, it's, you're going to spray under the stencil. Um, so you could have it angled this way. It wouldn't be as bad. But ideally, you're going to want it as close to 90 degrees as you can. Top down. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so here, I'm just going to try and join these uh, two sections up. Whenever you're doing camouflage on tanks like this, where it's crossing both the hull and turret, do you try and line up the camouflage across if I, the turret Yeah, as if, well, I, if I can. Um, if it's too much of a hassle, then no. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, but yeah. um, I will do, try and do that on this one. So that's the uh, first stripe done. This is what I was saying. You've got a mm -hmm. nice sort of slightly darker tone in the middle, really dark edge to define that. Um, and then you just continue that around the vehicle, working around the detail. So like here, you might go around the, the engine area. Sure. Um, again, we've gone around these pieces here. I'm just trying to think where the stencil can go nicely. If it can't go somewhere, just figure out somewhere else it can go. You haven't got the, the the what's going to go in the kit exactly yet, but there'll be multiple. There'll be multi multiple there'll be multiple shapes, shapes and sizes. Um, that, that it won't just be a square yeah. thing. It'll be something like this where you've got um, different curves to use to put it around models. Um, but again, the, the, there's probably several sizes of it, and exactly yeah. what goes in what kit isn't decided yet. But hopefully, by the time the Kickstarter's ready, we'll have sorted yeah. that out. <laughs> but it will it will make going around those unusual areas yeah a bit yeah easier. yeah that's yeah. the idea of having the the, the curves and the the, mm. the 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 concave and convex areas to go around things um so that's the uh the wobble camo mm -hmm. um we'll just quickly show off one of the other ones uh we're doing a the same sort of idea um but this is 
hexagon edging camo. Um, we, we do a, hex, a sticky hexagon camo, which we've done for years, which has been very popular. Yeah. Um, so we're just doing something now. It's not going to be the same. Uh, it won't be as detailed, but it'll, it'll be something uh, a bit similar. Um, obviously, you can use any of these of any colors you like. Mm -hmm. um, this is just how I choose to use them. You could choose to use it in a slightly different way. Um, instead of coming, d doing the stripes with the, the inner sure. sort of darker area, you could just go down the model Uh, in this sort of, if this was the model, you, you come down it this sort of a way mm -hmm. and just continue doing it in the same direction and maybe use a different stencil and rotate it so you're not getting the repeat. Mm -hmm. So you could do something like that um, oh, yeah. and have a, you know, a slightly different effect um, and play around with you know, shading in more areas or not. We've got these big indents, you could shade it a bit more and then less whether you had, where you don't have that. Um, yeah, I think with camouflage, it's all about breaking up the, the shape and the lines. Of yeah, the, so here you kind of got the geometric mixed with the fade out and yeah. it um, gives a different effect. So, you, you know, you could do it in different ways and or you could do it in equally, you could do it in more of a solid way where you're just blocking in a solid shape rather than the, the, the fade in the middle like I was doing earlier. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's different ways you can play with them. Um, this one works in the same sort of way as uh, the wobble cam. You're just going to pick out uh, certain areas. This is from Mantic. And, um, and on first blush, it looks like a, a slightly more difficult proposition than, than the tank, which is... It will be more difficult. Again, you're going to want to work around things um, like this uh, cockpit area. Mm. It'll be tricky to get it around some of these um, raised bumps here. Um, so the easiest thing to do is just to go around that. Um, so we'll demonstrate that quickly now. It's causing um, you problems. Ignore it. Well, move not on, necessarily ignore it, but yeah, life. just 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 don't don't make it don't let it cause you problems. Yeah. Just choose to go around it. So you just find a suitable piece of the stencil and um, work around that area. So here I'm only spraying this top section and you'll be surprised, if you're careful with the airbrush, you'll be surprised how little overspray has gone anywhere else. Yeah. So, and I was mainly aiming just in the middle section here. So here we're just going to, as I said, we're just going to go around this cockpit. in a similar way as we did uh, the tank. I think the first time I tried using some of these stencils myself, I had a tendency to run at too high a pressure. And yeah. the overspray, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was noticeable where my fingers had been holding stencils down. So a little and light. Yeah, uh, this little and light, um, and um, I'm probably using about 30 psi, but mm. you probably could go lighter than that. Um, you certainly don't want to have it any higher than that. Mm. Um, it just gives you a lot more control having the lower pressure. So we're just going around there, and then I'll probably come in it underneath around this central area. As you can see, the stencils are very bendy, so I can just wrap it around this front area and hold it tight. So there we go. And then we just continue to build up the color, uh, the same as on the tank. And okay. we'll come back and show you these, uh, both the tank and this aircraft when they're finished uh, at this stage. Um, and then just quickly now, we're gonna show you another one. This one we're going to call the Stretchagon Camo because it's stretchy hexagons. I see what you've done there. Yeah, it's, it's very, very clever. I'm, not, I'm glad you picked up on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is what this one looks like on the sheet. Again, uh, I did mention earlier, this one is really only suitable for use on relatively smooth bit, um, models mm -hmm. with recessed detail. Um, so something like this, it's uh, quite smooth. It can be more complicated of a shape like this one, mm -hmm. 
Um, again, I would work in sub-assemblies. So these are all magnetized on um, to, to help you paint it. Yeah. Um, but even the shape of the hull is quite complicated, um, but it will work around that. Um, but it's, it's just the fact that it's smooth. Um, if it isn't terribly smooth, um, you probably still could use it, but you wouldn't get the nice definition of the of the hexes, and it wouldn't. It probably just wouldn't uh, look as nice. Anyway, um, so for doing this, I like to use. Uh, there's two different sizes so far, as you can see. Um, I normally start off by using the smaller one to do the the darkest areas, and then you switch to the bigger ones to do the lighter areas. So we'll just do a quick section of this as a demo. Obviously, patterns are not scale specific in the majority of cases. How, no. how sort of large or small have you gone with these? Um, th this exact one or stencils in general? Stencils in general. Um, I mean, I've had people use a stencil on something that's, um, you know, 28 millimeter figures mm. right up to something where it's the same stencil um, been used on some sort of starship that is of a astronomical scale. Okay. So it's, it's of about what People often ask me what scale are they for? It's like mm. whatever looks right on the model. Um, so, you know, like World War II symbols, for example, what scale is a US star for? It's like, well, it, or, or a German cross. Is it yeah. for a German cross on the side of a, a, a Jeep or a Sturm Tiger? It's going to be degrees of you know, degrees. degrees. Of scale. So, yeah, yeah. whatever looks right is going to work fine. So, you know, different, different scales. Mm don't matter too much, just try it and see what looks right. Um, but obviously the smaller the stencil, the smaller the model, it's gonna make more sense. Sure. Um, but um, yeah. But again, you're you're gonna be showing us mixing and matching here on 28 mil, which I think shows the- Yeah, I mean, the, this, the, the is, this, is the same, this is the same ship but in a different size. Yeah. Uh, and I've just used the smaller one, but then there's nothing to stop me using this smaller one on, on pieces on the, of the larger, the larger vehicle sure. and get the same effect. Um, I, I usually like to have not too much of the darkest color, so that's why I'm using the smaller one. Um, anyway, okay. we digress. So I'm just going to pick out sort of sections of the stencil. We're not necessarily going to just hold it on and spray the whole thing. Mm. We're going to pick an area of, of the vehicle where one particular sort of hex section looks nice, and we're going to spray that. We're going to get a little bit of overspray that will touch the others, and then we'll move on to somewhere else. So I think this large one there is going to look good on that edge. I probably can hit this next one as well. We're only going to spray it where it's actually touching the model. And we're just going to try and get the main sections we're aiming at, a nice dark brown. Again, try not to spray too much. This is just air now, because I can see it's a little bit wet. Um, you can't move the stencil once you started spraying. So that's the sort of thing we're going for. Um, and we get the nice sort of fade out, which I think yeah. looks really cool with this sort of style, futuristic uh, camo. And we're just gonna pick out certain areas of the vehicle, um, remembering we're gonna do another stage. And you can do as many stages as you like. Mm. Um, I normally like to do at least three colors with camo, um, but you could just do two or you could do, well, as many as you like. Mm. But, we're going to have to remember to leave gaps. So I don't want to put another one right next to it because we'll probably put a lighter section here. Um, so we'll just move around somewhere else. So I think for that darker color, that's probably enough for now. You can always come back and add some later. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter too much if they overlap each other um, in different ways. Um, it probably actually adds to it, if anything. Um, so we can come back with that shortly. Okay, we're back. Brian has worked his magic. <laughs> uh, and we are at a stage where a lot of people may be happy enough to just move on yeah. to weathering and washes. Yeah, exactly. And it's, um, if we go to the other camera, yep. uh, as we can see, I've done the stripes across the whole thing. We have that nice sort of lighter toe in the middle. Mm. So you kind of have got your three colors there. And you could leave it at that stage and crack on with your detailing weathering. Yeah. Um, one option that I sometimes like to do is actually spray a lighter color in the very middle of these sections just to um, give it a bit more yeah. difference. So we'll do that now. We've got a very light sort of pale green in the airbrush here. Yeah. And very carefully, I'm just gonna spray through the middle of these sections, just lightly build up some color. So we have, this is one of the reasons I went so dark with the um, edge, the very edge. Sure. 
Uh, that helps leave you the definition. And it really gives it a striking contrast as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So, there we go. Well, that's very distinctive. I'm, I'm just going to pick out the rest of this side. There's no masking needed here. You just need to be careful doing lots of little lines, sort of like this. That's just too dark, too white to show it up. Um, That's right. I, but, um, I can see that. Yeah. 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 So there we go. So that's it, what it looks like with the extra color. Mm -hmm. And that's what it looks like without. So both look cool. It's just different, whatever you like. And um, there's all sorts of variations of colors and patterns. You could put the stripes long ways. Um, you could use different sizes together. Um, yeah, there's all, all sorts of ways you could use them and get the same sort of effect. Yeah. Of course, um, combine various distinctive stencil patterns together then yeah. to make your, your stripes in the hexagonal and then maybe drop in one of the other patterns as the, the sort of the, the center marker overlapping. In yeah, yeah, colors. you could do that. Um, another way to do it is, uh, I'll just show it on this one. This is the other thing we worked on. This is the, the HS hexagon camo. Um, so we could do the same effect by putting mm -hmm. the, the lighter banding through it. But what another thing you can do, if you find the right stencil, is you could actually use a smaller version of the hexagon camo stencil mm -hmm. to work through in the center of where we already were. Okay. So I'll just do that quickly. And I'm just literally just spraying the very edge of the stencil. And that's it. So oh, there's one pass, and then we could fill in the other side of the of the shape if we wanted to. Yep. But I'm gonna same sort of way. I'm gonna try and leave the middle a little bit darker. So there you go. So you can have the, the hexes within the hexes, and you just continue that stripe wherever you wanted it to go. It's incredibly distinctive looking. Yep. Love that. So we're going to come back to our uh, other spaceship here mm -hmm. just to quickly show you the next colors. So I'm going to use the bigger size here, as I said, which will let me pick out a bigger section at a time and hold it nice and flat. I'm going to build the color to where I want it, not blast it on in one go. And you can overlap what you've already done. Um, sometimes it actually helps with the pattern. And be careful not to touch what you've already done. And you always want to spray from the same side of the stencil unless you've fully dried or washed the stencil. You don't want to use the same, you don't want to use the same, you don't want to pick the same section and just spray the same one all over the model you'll see the repeat. Um, so pick a different section for each area. So that one went on very wet, so I need to leave that alone. It's a bit difficult to spray it and be on camera and see the stencil is. Stretch pattern is uh, incredibly interesting because it has that look as if somebody has taken a, a hexagonal pattern and attempted to pull it around the curves of the model. Yeah, I, I figure mm. it works, works really well. Like potentially it's some kind of adaptive camo that's mm. sort of Rippling. weaving around yeah. the vehicle. Um, I, I do think it looks very cool to on the sci-fi vehicles especially um, to... Uh, Camo in motion. Camo in motion, yeah. So, there we go. And then you'll just continue in the same sort of theme. And if you decided that you hadn't done enough dark somewhere, you could just come in now and do that mm -hmm. and just build the colors up um, to whatever colors you want. And then those will do something like these examples here. 
So here's uh, the same thing, only smaller. Um, and I've done some sort of shading and weathering on there mm. to pick out the uh, the shadows and everything, make it stand out a bit more. And the same sort of thing here. Yeah, once the weathering goes on and yeah. a little bit of additional detail yeah. on the so lining this, or whatever. This one has just... less shading than the other one. Um, this one's from Hive Mind Minis. This mm -hmm. is a cool sci fi thing. Um, again, this was in sub assemblies to paint, makes it a bit easier to, to do. This is just magnets. Um, and um, there's a different color scheme of the same pattern. And here's the other patterns we saw earlier on a different vehicle. This is the, the uh, hexagon camo. Mm. And this is the wobble camo. So yeah, used well, on all sorts. Even this where it's very chunky detail it works quite well. Um, again, the stretch again, the, the stretch again camo would work less well on this because of all the chunky detail. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the current different camo schemes. There may well be more during the campaign of the Kickstarter. Sounds fantastic. Uh, quick question then: How many? Camo patterns are have you currently been sort of tinkering around with? Um, there's the the hexagon, the wobble, the stretch, stretch gone, stretch gone. So that's the three. Um, I I may look at doing a more generic camo, but um, it'd be so easy for someone to make that themselves that I don't know whether it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's necessary. Um, sure. But then I said that about the sticky ones, and people kept asking for it, so I made it anyway. Fair enough. Um, I mean, the wobble camo is similar to that anyway. You could you could use it in a similar way to mm. get sort of the more sort of blobby kind of shapes. Um, I probably won't do the digital camo um, if you if you don't have that perfectly angled correctly. It looks really weird. Yes. Um, the hexagon because it has the six sides. It doesn't really matter too much. But mm. with the the reg regular digital camo, such as this one. Yeah. Um, it's just going to get really complicated trying to line things up. And um, I yeah. may look at it, but I don't think it will work nicely that you're better off with the sticky one. Um, Makes sense. So, but there's also other stencils um, that are coming that you could, that aren't intended for camo, but you could use them for camo. Oh, okay. So um, some of the organic ones um, could be equally be used on tanks as they could on, uh, on creatures. Massive gribbly creatures. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, Here's a little bit of a sneak peek of an upcoming video where we will be using some of the creature ones in more detail. Uh, take it away. So yeah, this is uh, one of the other ones that's coming. Um, and this one's called Blenny because it's based on a, one of a fish called a leopard Blenny. Mm -hmm. And um, we can use this to put in the, uh, the lighter pattern through the middle of our stripes and we'll get an even more interesting pattern going on. Oh, wow. You just follow that through. So instead of just a stripe through the middle, we have some sort of mottling effect. Mottly, mottly effect in there. So yeah, and then this one probably does need a relatively flat vehicle. Mm. Um, wouldn't work as well on something like this. Um, but um, on something like here, where you have got reasonably flat panels, sure, it does work quite cool. That's very interesting. Exciting stuff, and nice to see that you don't have to allow yourself to be constrained by what a stencil. No, says you can use, so. you could use them in many sort of ways. I mean, so coming back to this pattern, you could just use this on a reasonably flat vehicle to make the the camo pattern entirely out of this. So all you all you do is hold it onto the model and just make some uneven shapes and um, come up with your camo pattern that way. Obviously, this is very extreme colors here, but hmm. you get the idea. You can use this to um, create a whole different camo all by itself without any of the other stencils. Yeah, and that does have a, a whole alternate look all of its own. Mm. And, and when you're doing sci-fi bits and pieces, uh, not subjecting yourself to the, the norms is always interesting. It could really make your army your own as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's always like uh, I made a stencil for uh, for veins on creatures, mm -hmm. and people were telling me how much they liked my lightning stencil because <laughs> it was, they just used different colours and it was making lightning instead. So yeah, there's all different ways you can use them, not just how I showed you.
There you go. So yeah, have fun with them and send me some pictures of what you do. I'd love to see what everyone does with the stencils. Sounds great. Definitely show us off your work. You can drop in the project system uh, and drop any questions you have down below. Uh, we're going to be back soon with some more from Brian. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.